convicts had escaped from the state prison at Chino, California. We knew they were both armed, both dangerous. The report said they were coming our way. We had to be waiting for them. Morning, Joe. Oh, hi, Crowley. What's doing? Any word in those escaped prisoners? Nothing this morning, no. Captain would like to see you right away, Joe. Okay. Ben check in yet? No, he hasn't. It's getting a little late, so it must have held him up, huh? Captain wants to see you right away. Some bad news. Well, what's about, do you know? Maybe it'd be better if he told you. Okay. I'll check you later. Oh, morning, Joe. Morning, Captain. You want to see me? Yeah, come on in. Sit down. Got some bad news, Joe. Real bad. Oh, what about? I know how much it means. I wish I didn't have to be the one to tell you. Well, tell me what? I'm sorry, Joe. It's about Ben. Something's happened. Ben? What do you mean? We heard about it early this morning. I thought about calling you. I figured it'd be better if I told you in person. What's the matter? Ben sick? He's dead, Joe. Ben's dead early this morning. Huh? Yeah. Sorry. Heart attack happened a little after 6 o'clock this morning. Oh, no. Got out of bed, started dressing to go to work. Went downstairs, put a pot of coffee on, make some toast. His wife heard him fall. She went downstairs. She found him already dead. He went fast. I don't get it. It couldn't be. I'm sorry, Joe. It means a lot to all of us. Well, I don't get this. Ben didn't have any trouble with his heart. He never mentioned anything about that. Maybe that was the trouble. It was his heart, all right. When his wife found him, she called the doctor and the fire department rescue squad. They worked over him for about an hour. No use. And his wife called me enough to tear your heart out. I can't believe it. What did she say? She didn't break up. Too shocked to realize it, I guess. Sounded apologetic. She said, I'm sorry, Captain. This is Mrs. Romero. Ben died this morning. Thought you ought to know, Ben's dead. This is terrible. It's a lousy shame. She kept saying the same thing over again. I'm sorry, Ben's dead. I thought you ought to know, Ben's dead. I tried to talk to her. It wasn't much use. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You were with him a long time. Yeah, 11 years. The day I came on the job, they assigned me as his partner. It's a tough one. It's hard to believe. It's tougher on his wife. Well, if it's all right with you, I'd like to go out and see her. All right. I wish I could give you the day off, Joe. I know what it means to you. The escaped convicts thing, I just can't spare you. That's all right. I just soon work. I figure I ought to talk to Amy, though, his wife. Might help take the edge off it for her, huh? Sure, go ahead. Joe. Yeah? I know what it is. I've been on the job 19 years. I've lost two partners, good cops. One of them was killed in the line of duty. The other one worked at his job until he dropped. It's the same, Joe. Yeah? In my book, they both rate medals. <laughs> what I was going to say to his wife. I thought about his little boy. I thought about Ben. Eleven years I'd been working as a cop and all of a sudden it wasn't the same anymore. I thought about the first day I met Ben. I was a rookie. I remembered what he taught me. I thought about what I owed him. I thought about thousands of cops just like him all over the country. The ones that came before us, the ones that'll take our place. I thought about their lives, what they meant, what their jobs meant. I thought about Ben. Eleven years. Stakeouts, the early morning watch, interrogations, office duty. You could cover it in volumes or write it on the back of an envelope. He was a good cop. He was a good friend. There wasn't much else to say. It was a big loss. I went over to Ben's house for about an hour and I talked to his wife. I told her to call me if she needed anything. Then I checked back in at the office for work. Officer Frank Smith was assigned to work with me. The big problem at the moment was a pair of escaped convicts. Smith and I drove out to run down a possible lead. 
5 a.m. We got to the address listed, the Cathedral of St. Augustine. We checked at the rectory. On it to hold him services. No, that's the order. It's probably just practicing. Easter hymn sure sounds pretty, doesn't it? Yeah, they do. Then he takes me back. That's it. Never believe it, Joe. I used to be a boy tenor. Mm -hmm. Sorry to keep you waiting. Telephone. Are you Father Moon? Yes. Come in, please. Thank you. The police officer's father. I see. This is my partner, Frank Smith. How do you do? How do you do, sir? My name's Friday. How do you do? I'd like to talk to you a few minutes if you have some time, Father. Well, of course. Sit down, gentlemen. Thank you. about a Jack Blaine, Father, and we understand you know him quite well. Oh, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I read about him in the paper this morning, the trouble he's in. Is that what you wanted to talk about, Sergeant? Yes, sir. We're making a check on all his known friends and relatives. Oh, very unfortunate, wasn't it? Did the newspapers get the story correct? Yes, sir, I'm afraid so. When was the last time you heard from Jack Blaine, Father? I think it's been three years at least, maybe longer. I don't think I've heard from him since he went to prison. Blaine never wrote to you? None of his family ever contacted you? His mother got by to see me once, I think it was about a year ago. That's the last I heard of the Blaines. Too bad. Well, would you have any idea where his mother's living now? Not offhand, no. I could check in the parishioner's book. We might have an address for her. If you wouldn't mind, Father. Certainly a tragedy, I mean, happening at Easter time. I'll remember the boy in my mass tomorrow. Lord knows he can use some prayers. Yes, sir, I guess he can. How about Blaine's friends and relatives, Father? I mean, besides his mother, do you happen to know any of them? Yes, I believe there's some of them still living in the parish. I'll have to go through the addresses in my visiting book. Right. The newspapers weren't too specific. How did he manage to escape the way he did? I always thought state penitentiaries were well guarded. Apparently, Blaine was one of the trusted prisoners. It's a minimum security prison to begin with, Father. I see. I suppose Blaine and the man he escaped with thought about it a good deal. According to the paper, it was well planned. When did they get away, last night? This morning, prison officials figure about 2 a.m. They slept a guard and went over the fence. Somehow the two of them got hold of a gun. They held up a motorist on the highway and stole his car. That's the last report we've had. Terrible. Did the police consider them dangerous? Well, they're armed. Both of them were doing time for robbery. They both used guns before. Can you think of anyone in particular Blaine might contact if he should come back to the city, Father? Mm, no, I don't think so. No one in particular. He was never very close to his parents. I knew Jack very well when he was younger. Rough house type, lots of energy. Nice boy, though. He had a bad home life. Oh, that's so? His father used to run around and drink quite a bit. He took the pledge two, three times. He never kept it, though. The mother didn't help much either. Too bad. How about possible contacts he might have out of town, Father? Can he help us there at all? I'm afraid not, Sergeant. I think Jack knew some people in San Francisco. I don't know their names or addresses, though. I haven't any idea. No special person or place that you know of that he'd be likely to go if he heads back for Los Angeles? No, none I can think of. You imagine he'd be likely to come back here? Well, we're not sure. Last report we had seemed to indicate Blaine and his partner were heading this way. Prison's only about 40 miles away. Could be there in the city now. I don't understand. I mean, with all the police looking for them, why would they come back here? Well, they probably figure they can find cover a lot easier than they could out in some of the small towns. Sergeant. Yes, Father. Do you think they'll have trouble taking Jack? I mean, can they take him alive? Well, we'll try our best to make it that way. It's just like I told you, Father. He's got a gun. If he's cornered, there's a good chance he might try to shoot his way out. It's discouraging sometimes. I try to help them. I pray for them. Young thieves. I only hope they're all as lucky as he was. How's that, sir? Table over there. Figure of a man on it? Oh, yeah. It's a statue of Dismas. One of the luckiest men who ever lived. I like to tell fellas like Jack about him. I don't think I understand, Father. You know the story of the crucifixion? The two men who were crucified with Christ? They were both thieves. Mm -hmm. A few minutes before he died, one of the thieves turned to Christ on the cross, confessed his crimes, asked our Lord to remember him. Christ told him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. The man's name was Dismas. He liked to call him the good thief. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I told Jack about it. He should have remembered it. Yeah, I guess so. I told him you never give up hope. You can make the grade in the last five minutes of your life. Jack ought to know better. He ought to remember. Sir. Good thief. He made it with a prayer, not with a gun in his hand. Before we left Father Newman, he gave us a list of eight names and addresses, people in the neighborhood who've known the escaped convict, Jack Blaine, before he was sentenced to the state penitentiary to serve time on his robbery conviction. 3.15 p.m. 
We met with Sergeants Max Herman and J.E. Crowley from robbery. We divided the list of names in half and began checking them out. How about you? No luck on our end either. Last I heard of him was when he was sent out two and a half years ago. And finishes that. Any late reports at all? Yeah, there's a teletype from the sheriff's office. He was waiting here when Max and I got back. Guess our hunch was right. Looks like they're headed this way. How do you mean? Somebody spot him? Just this side of West Covina. They held up a grocery store, slugged the owner. He got $23.40. It's going to take him far. Descriptions match out? Yeah, perfectly. Suspects believe to be two prisoners who escaped the state from California Institution for Men, Chino, Jack Blaine, Wesley A. Russell. Something else. Yeah? The grocery store they knocked over. They picked up another gun, the owners. Description and serial numbers on it here. They got 20 rounds of ammunition, too. Supplementary APB's already on it. How about a car? They switch over? And if they have, we don't know about it. Apparently, they're still using the Buick Coupe they took from that motorist this morning. No reports on it, though. That's a queer one. You'd think somebody would spot it. They got the highway patrol working this. Highway patrol, sheriff's office, our department, everybody you can name. By the way, you had R and I pull their mugshot, didn't you? Yeah, both of them. Blaine and Russell, they're running off the duplicates now. Five hundred of them. They should be ready pretty soon. Pretty good shots? Mm-hmm. Stand-up mugs, fairly recent. They were made the last time we had the two of them through here. How about that other list of their friends and relatives we pulled from their packages? Young and Caleb were checking them out, weren't they? Probably still are, no work from them yet. How do you size the two of them, Joe? Blaine and Russell. It's a tough combination. Russell's older. He's got the nerve. Any way you figure it, it's not going to be easy. The guns and the ammunition they grabbed, that ain't going to help much either. Guess the roadblocks are up, huh? Highway Patrol take care of that? Yeah, all set. Working now. All our special details have been alerted. Airports, bus depots, train terminals. Just about everything covered. <laughs> Robbery, Collie. Yeah, man, how is it? Uh -huh. You'll stay on it, huh? Right. See you later. Caleb. Me and Young are still checking on friends of Russell and some of the places he hung out. Any luck? Nothing yet. Either one of you see the captain on the way in? No, he said he'd be over at the sheriff's office, didn't he? Up there. I got it. shots of the suspects and drove out to the scene of the robbery. It was a men's clothing store near the intersection of North Figueroa and Merced. We showed a group of mug shots to the victim and he definitely identified Blaine and Russell as the holdup men. The robbery had netted them less than $20. We relayed all the information we got back to communications immediately and another supplementary broadcast was gotten out on the two fugitives. Later at 7.05 p.m., Frank Smith and I got a call to return to our station. We went back to the city hall. At 7.38 p.m., Blaine and Russell hit again, this time at a sporting goods store in the San Fernando Valley. It netted them $94, a 30-30 hunting rifle, and 200 rounds of ammunition. According to the broadcast, they were last seen heading north through the valley in the Buick Coupe, the original escape car. Got a hunch, Joe. It's going to be a long night. Yeah, it's a rough with guns and ammunition. If they want to make a stand, they're all ready for it. Can't see how they get too far, though. That hot car roadblocks up. Somebody's bound to stop them. Yeah, we're doing all right so far, aren't they? Friday. Smith. Yeah, Jack. Communication of Ventura Sheriff's Office. Blaine and Russell were spotted just across the county line. The sheriff figures he's got them boxed in. How close? A lot of territory. 20 square mile circle. They say they got Blaine and Russell somewhere inside. We're sending up men to help out. You're two of them. 20 square miles going to take a lot of men. If we need more, we'll get them. It's no easy touch. They're desperate. You heard the latest? What's that? You know they got three guns and a load of ammunition. Yeah. The last place they hit in the valley, they served notice. Yeah, what's that? They're not going to be taken alive, either one of them. Captain Didion and a dozen other men from robbery, Frank Smith and I left the office and headed north over the freeway through the San Fernando Valley. The area where the two escaped convicts were reportedly surrounded was just the other side of the Ventura County line. On the way out, we stopped for a minute at a gas station and I phoned Ben's house. His wife had been given a sedative and she was resting. Her folks were there to help out with the final arrangements. at the meeting point on the edge of the blockaded area from which the search was being directed. 
communication facilities have been set up. There were over 500 men taking part in the hunt. From our office, the L.A. Sheriff's Department, the State Highway Patrol, Ventura Sheriff's Department, and a couple of dozen private citizens who lived in the area. Together with Max Herman and Crowley, Frank Smith and I took up our positions in the line of men that stretched north and east, then north again, circling the entire area, 20 square miles of it. The line drew slowly inward. 12 midnight, 1 a.m., no sign of the suspects. We stayed at it all night. Sunday, April 25th, 9 a.m., a half dozen planes from the Sheriff's Aero Squadron continued patrolling the entire area. idea the size of these fields just start walking over them yeah it's a long walk i could use a cup of coffee couldn't you yeah me too I'd like some donuts too freddy smith yeah Kevin. no use beating the brush around here anymore we're moving up three miles north how come blaine and russell they hit again early this morning kidnapped an old couple from the farmhouse they still on foot yeah as far as we know they're hemmed in in a two square mile area may try to break out use the old couple as a shield where does that leave us i don't know looks bad doesn't it yeah, they kidnapped them they're desperate you figure it Come on. 10.15 a.m., all of the men in the search party were shifted north to the area where the two escaped convicts and their kidnapped victims were last seen. Two officers were sent to each farmhouse in the immediate neighborhood to make sure that the suspects and their victims were not hit out or that they were being held as hostages. The officers were ordered to remain at the homes in the event that Blaine and Russell might try to find cover. The searching party moved slowly over the affected area. We knew for certain the suspects were still somewhere inside. 10.45 a.m. Still no sign of them. The lines drew in closer. 11 a.m. all over the place up there, aren't they? She doesn't figure. We've combed every foot of this neighborhood. Attention all officers. Attention all officers. This is Captain Didion. Return to your posts immediately. The search has been canceled. The search has been canceled. How about that? I don't know. Come on, let's find out. Attention all officers. Attention all officers. Captain Didion, return to your posts immediately. The search has been canceled. The search has been canceled. What's the matter? Are we giving it up? No, but maybe we've been going at it backwards. Been trying all night and half the day to jump them. Got a new idea. Yeah. Maybe we can make them jump us. <laughs> Captain Didion and Sheriff Durley ordered the men to return to the sheriff's office. With the exception of two deputy sheriffs, Captain Didion, Sheriff Durley, Frank Smith, and myself, the rest of the searching party vacated the area. 
The plan was to give the general impression that the search had been canceled in the hope that it might bring the suspects out in the open. Captain Didion and Sheriff Gurley decided instead to try and lure Blaine and Russell from wherever they were hiding out. Each of the small farmhouses in the immediate neighborhood, eight of them in all, were already under surveillance. Each of the occupants were requested to park their cars in a conspicuous place outside their homes with the distributor head removed. In the event they heard anyone trying to start their cars, they were to remain indoors. Frank Smith and I were assigned to cover one of the houses. The other men covered the rest of them. We staked out about 300 yards from the house. We waited. 1.05 p.m. Foxtails really getting your clothes, don't they, Joe? Yeah, they do. Sounds kind of hot, huh? Yeah. Just remember. What's that? Easter Sunday. Wonder how long this thing's gonna go on. I well, promised my kids to hide Easter eggs today. Superior Court, Department 88, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted on three counts of first-degree robbery and one count of kidnapping. One count of escape is still pending. accomplice was tried and convicted on the same charges and received a like sentence. <laughs> 